how are you? Hi. <laughs> I am loving turning red so far. So I, I cannot wait for the next hour or whatever is left for me to witness. Um, Mei Li is already uh, like a favorite character for me. Uh, Domi, can you talk about uh, what first inspired you to tell this story? It feels like such a nice, like natural evolution from Bao. And I was wondering if it felt that way for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, and sorry, there's like a fly in the room. Um, like I mentioned in the presentation, like I felt like I had a lot more to kind of unpack and explore in that mother-child relationship, especially between a mom and a daughter. Uh, and when I was first uh, asked to pitch, you know, these uh, three ideas to pitch as a feature film, I knew all of them were going to be girl coming of age stories. I was really uh, passionate and, and wanting to make a story to help uh, and to show girls maybe May's age, like, uh, and then help guide them through this tumultuous time in their, in their lives. And, um, and uh, yeah, like, I, I think for me, the, I, I really wanted to dive deeper into that mother daughter uh, relationship, especially from the point of view of an Asian kid. Uh, and really explored that nuance of like, for May, you know, she looks up to her mom. She loves her mom. She actually genuinely is like her best friend in the beginning of the movie and they enjoy spending time together. But then she's changing, like, she, you know, nature is setting in, she's changing. She's getting all of these new feelings, these new interests. She's starting to get into boy bands and hanging out with her friends more. And she doesn't know how to, deal with that and the red panda kind of comes in and just brings her struggle to the surface and uh I thought that was just a really uh juicy topic to to explore definitely I love that I keep thinking now of the other infamous film about um maturation if you will Carrie and I'm like well this is a much more um how to guide uh, yeah. than that was <laughs> probably a, a more a, a rosier outlook uh, but Lindsay for you what were the first steps that you needed to do to prepare yourself to take on turning red like research or what conversations did you have with Domi about the story yeah, I mean, I think the, fir the first thing that's super important um, in, in the process is actually kind of assembling your, your kind of key creative team, because certainly every um, story has different challenges. Every director has a different style um, and different experiences. And I think, you know, what, as, what we're always trying to do is kind of get a good sense of where kind of the strengths are and where we can really do a good job of supporting um, a, a director in, in the process. And so for us, it was, you know, first and foremost, a writer is always um, really hard. It's hard because it's such a kind of collaborative relationship and it's, you know, you're bringing somebody into a, a weird Pixar process that is not necessarily intuitive for writers because um, <laughs> we're weird and we do things very differently here. So finding a great writer to partner um, with Domi on the script and um, was, was first and foremost. And then obviously finding a great, you know, production designer and visual effects supervisor. Those are always just an editor, um, head of story, all those people that are kind of responsible for crafting the film in the first year or year and a half of its life. But it's a very small team. And so um, that was the first kind of, thing in front of us. Um, and then also getting to know Domi, mean, we hadn't worked together before. So getting a sense of kind of how, she, what her style was, how did she like to work? Like, how does, does she like big rooms or small rooms? Or is she comfortable in front of a group of people talking? Or does she like to kind of let other people kind of take the reins? So I don't know, it feels, it's it sounds very kind of um, maybe mundane, but it is all about kind of assembling a team because that's the team that's obviously going to carry you through the next four years of making this movie and making sure it's the best version of itself on the screen. Well, that's great. And speaking of, you know, teams, uh, Maylee does not just have her mother, uh, though that is a wonderful relationship. She has her best friends, all of whom yes. are uh, iconic in their own right, uh, full of their own idiosyncrasies. Domi, how did you um, sort of decide like the balancing traits, if you will, of each of these girls that they have their own unique experience growing up in the same time and place and yet together they form, you know, their own little four town? Yeah. Um... 
Yeah, I, I just drew inspiration from a lot of my, uh, you know, closest girlfriends gr growing up. And it was important for us to make sure each girl was distinctive that mm. immediately, like if they say one line, you knew exactly who, who, who said it. Uh, and, um, you know, it was, you know, ev every girl kind of represents a kind of friend that I feel like I've had in my, in my mm. life, like Miriam's that is a tomboyish, like super playful, goofy girl. She, she's that friend that kind of pulls you out of your comfort zone to maybe like start doing more rebellious things. She, she probably was the one that introduced May to four town <laughs> um, and just kind of got her like the, the, the first steps out of her, her mom's world. Um, and, uh, you know, Priya kind of represents all of the, the girls and myself who are really into like vampires. And we all had kind of like a gothy vampire monster boyfriend uh, <laughs> phase in, in our lives. And, uh, we just thought it'd be really fun if she was super deadpan as well. Um, just to contrast the, the, the energy of the other girls and um, for Abby, uh, she's actually, yeah, like she actually is a direct inspiration uh, of, from uh, the, the voice actress, Hayne mm -hmm. Park, who's been my, who, who's my colleague and fellow Pixar artist, but we actually went to college together. <laughs> Oh, that's and awesome. Always, yeah, and she's always been that that like friend who's your ride or die who would get angry for you in situations and get like like she, she's your greatest defender and she and I just always loved how loud her voice is because we would often go to karaoke together and she would belt belt <laughs> everything out. So we thought it'd be fun to have for me to have a friend who was that that loud you know, like ride or die, like friend who will get angry for you in any circumstance. Um, yeah. I love that. I love all of them deeply. And I especially love all these like callbacks to 2002, which I did not realize was such like a specific year for me. Cause I was like, Oh my God. Yes. All of that. From the first second I see this Tamagotchi, I was like, mm, okay, it's my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Lindsay for you, was there any, um, aspect of that that stood out for you or made it easier or even at times more challenging to sort of help craft this story in such a specific time and place that isn't maybe as recognizable as say the 80s or the 70s yeah I mean I feel like I was I was I was like oh my god I think I was having my first kid um in 2002 or at least 2003 I so, <laughs> so I was like oh right I vaguely remember that time frame um but I think it's I think it's it made it in a weird way, such a great way to ground this story. It's just another way to ground it um, is to put it in this very specific time and place. I think um, there's something really great when you're able to do that, when there's magic involved or mythology involved to have this kind of flip side of this very real grounded moment and space and time. Um, it kind of helps, it helps make the story feel more more real like you're like oh I it's in Toronto it's I took all of those little things that are specific to that time frame anybody who's you know lived through it is like oh right um so I do think that there's something to that that's like really great when you have a story that's maybe a little more fantastical to be able to kind of then counterbalance that with a very real tangible time and place um and then you know everybody like I would want to say like probably 70% of our crew was at least somewhere around the sweet spot of being at that age and, and, or time. Um, so they all were like, Oh yeah. Like the, you know, the outfits and the bracelets and the backpacks and what you had on the backpacks <laughs> and the buttons and what, you know, all of those things and the stickers and stuff like that. It was like, everybody was instantly able to throw in about eight things that were very specific um, that yeah. they remembered that we kind of were able to use in the movie. I love that. I was not expecting it and it totally, you know, Works. even made the film even more for me. So thank you guys so much. I cannot wait to see the rest of it and for the whole world to join me. <laughs> Have a great day. Yeah.